The Savior alone carried the cross for all of my dear. He paid the cost. Salvation complete. Now forever I'm free. Calvary covers it all. Good morning, everyone. A, a sunny, warm welcome to Kimmel Bay Church this morning for Palm Sunday 2022. We told Gordon and Ali it's always sunny in Kimmel Bay. And look at the sunshine. Praise the Lord. I also cracked a joke a few weeks ago about Gordon arriving on a donkey. Someone's bought a carrot for the donkey, but there's no donkey, so sorry about that. <laughs> um, a couple of notices before we start this morning. There is an Easter greeting card. It's going to be on the hatch by the tea and coffee. If you want tea and coffee, you have to sign the card. <laughs> It's an Easter greeting to our brothers and sisters in Moldova. So please can you send them our, our love. Um, and once the card is full, you can have a tea and coffee. It'll be, it'll be on there. I will take it in a second. Thank you, Gordon. There is also lots of these invites as well that Joe is going to speak about in a minute. Where's Joe? Joe will be speaking about this in a minute, I assure you. Um, but there's lots, of those, there's, lo there's lots of those invites to hand out to your friends about all the events next weekend. Um, the service on Good Friday is 10.30 for communion service here at KBC. Sunrise service followed by breakfast. Sunrise is 7.30. If you want a breakfast at 8 o'clock, you have to be there at half seven. You can't just roll in for a bacon butty. You can try, but I'll be on the door. Um, and then, obviously, the resurrection service at 10.30 and the fun day on Saturday. So please take one of those. This, this week... Oh, actually, what, is Joe not back yet? All right, I'll do something else. Um, this week... Have you got the slide, um, Elaine, please? Here she is. I'll do this. Um, this week, Gordon, to prepare our hearts for Easter for the most amazing event that's ever happened in history. Gordon is leading us on a, in a time of reflection, of prayer and Bible reading. It's at 8 a.m. here in the church, in this, here somewhere, we well, don't know where yet, and then 8 p.m. on Zoom. If you can't make any of the meetings, there is a reading plan so you can prepare our hearts for the most amazing event. These are on the counter as well when you go for your tea and coffee. Right. Drum, drum roll, please. Oh. Sorry, my little helper fell over. <laughs> um, next Saturday is a fun day. It seems so long since we've had an actual fun day outside. And... God willing, the weather's going to be shining, the sun's going to be shining, and we're going to have a fun day outside. There's already quite an excitement in the community. There's lots of people already saying to me that they're really excited, and it's just a great way for us to reach out into the local community. The local schools have given out the invites, which is fantastic, and we've been collecting, can you hold them up for everyone to see? Lots of chocolate, little mini lollies and little mini eggs because we're doing an easter egg trail and at the end of the easter egg trail it would be great if we can give every child or every family that take part a bag of chocolates 
So really, we would love it if you could all bring in some small chocolates that we can then use for the bags. But also, on the actual... It's very echoey. On the actual day, on Saturday, between 12 and 3 when the fun day's on, I can't do it all on my own. And Nancy's a great help, but I think you and I would struggle to do it all, wouldn't we? Yeah. Yeah. So we need lots more help, don't we, Nancy? Yeah, we need lots more help. Um, there's already some people come forward, but we need a lot more people willing to come forward to help out. There's a big inflatable human table football game going to be out there. There's sumo suits, there's crafts, there's Easter egg trail. There's lots of different things, so we need lots of different people to come and help us. And we'll need people to help set up as well. So if you're willing to come and help, then please come and see me, come and grab me at some point after the service and uh, I will allocate something for you to do. Thank you, Joe. Today's Palm Sunday where we get to celebrate as believers that Jesus rode into Jerusalem in a, a city that was under occupation by the, by the Romans. And I was reflecting on this yesterday of how to apply that, how do we understand that? And it made me think about Ukraine, that the occupation they, they are in. And then I thought about a savior coming in and the, the joy that they would have. And I envisioned in my mind Boris Johnson and it didn't work. And then I thought <laughs> Joe Biden and it didn't work. Our saviour that rode into Jerusalem is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And he came not to give physical freedom, but spiritual freedom so that we could be set free in our hearts to worship him. I think that's so worth worshipping and giving him thanks. So let's stand as we come into worship and let's pray this morning. Let's stand. Heavenly Father, we do thank you this morning that you're the God who came down. We thank you that you came into Jerusalem physically, but you came with a purpose to die upon the cross and to rise from the grave, to defeat death, so that we could have freedom in our hearts, so that we could be born again and we could experience your love, your peace, your joy, and all the benefits of knowing you as a loving Heavenly Father. And this morning, as we come into worship, Lord, we pray that you would come and move amongst us by your Holy Spirit, that you would lift our hearts to praise you and to worship you and to give you all the glory and honor that you deserve. So this morning, we invite your Holy Spirit to come and move amongst us, to come and set the captives free and to lift our hearts to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. I came across a song this week, and the words are very simple. And it says, Hosanna in the highest. Let our king be lifted up. Hosanna. You may not know it, but what we're going to do is it's a good way to prepare our hearts for worship. So whether you want to close your eyes and just listen to the words and let your heart settle and let your heart come into worship. We're just gonna play this a couple of times and then we'll continue in our worship.
Jesus, we lift you high this morning. Be high and lifted up. Receive all the glory and the praise and the honour that you are due this morning. We lift you on high. You deserve the highest praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you'd like to take your seats, I'd like the children to find a place where they can see the big screen. So children, if you can... If you can shuffle over a little bit so where you can see the screen and we're going to watch a video and it's just for you when it's all about Easter. How the gospel hasn't changed for 2000 years but how we how do we communicate the gospel to the next generation to the children? And um, Joel can can I ask you a question. Come on, don't be shy. What what is your favorite computer game? Hold on. Minecraft! <laughs> Good skills, Jill. Um, Mi- Minecraft. Put your hands up if you know what Minecraft is. Put your hands up. I'm quite surprised, actually. Quite a, f- quite a few of you. For those that don't know what Minecraft is, thanks, Elaine. Jesus and his disciples gathered for one final meal together. Jesus said, I am with you a little while longer. Where I am going, you cannot come. Why can't I follow you? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus wanted to leave his disciples with some very important words. Love one another, even as I have loved you. You love one another. By this, all men will know you are my disciples. I am going to my father to prepare a place for you. On the Mount of Olives, there was a garden called Gethsemane that Jesus and his disciples knew very well. After supper, Jesus led his disciples to the garden and told them to sit while Jesus went off to pray. Jesus knew that his time to die had come. Oh my father, please take this suffering away from me. Yet, not my will, but yours be done. Being in agony while he was praying so hard, his sweat drops became like drops of blood falling down. Jesus went back to his disciples and a crowd had gathered with swords and clubs. Judas, one of Jesus' disciples, was amongst the crowd. Judas greeted Jesus with a kiss. Jesus knew the greeting wasn't in friendship. Judas used the kiss as a sign to help the crowd identify and arrest Jesus. Judas, why do you betray me with a kiss? The soldiers arrested Jesus and brought him before the high priest. He was questioned and beaten. They brought him before Pilate who was the ruler. Even though he saw Jesus was an innocent man, Pilate allowed the crowd to decide his punishment. Let him be crucified, let him be crucified. Jesus was stripped down, whipped and made fun of. They placed a crown of thorns on his head and nailed his hands and feet to a cross. While he was dying, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Then he cried out with his last dying breath, It is finished. He was placed in a tomb with a large stone rolled in front of it. Mary came to the tomb to put spices on Jesus' body, but the stone was moved and the tomb was empty. Two angels appeared. Don't be afraid. Jesus is not here. He is risen. Then Jesus himself appeared to Mary. She hugged him and wept. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. If you want to know something cool, this story is a true story. These events happened almost 2,000 years ago. If you want to read more about the Easter story, you can find it in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the Bible. The Holy Bible is the best-selling book of all time. Jesus changed the world. He returned to his Father in heaven, and he will be returning again. Are you ready? If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to share the video. And if you want to see more videos like this, check out my channel using the link on the screen. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch There you go, the gospel in Minecraft. I said to Joel, was it good? He said, yes. It was good. Children, was it good? 
Jonah wasn't impressed. I told Jonah that I've got a surprise in the service this morning. And then he said, it's just a Minecraft video. I'll get you an Easter egg later. <laughs> Let's pray for the children as they go out before Gordon brings us God's word this morning. Heavenly Father, thank you um, that we can communicate through Minecraft to the next generation. And Lord, as we communicate the gospel and, and teach them about you and, and Joe and Sarah plant seeds in their hearts, Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit would water those seeds, that they would grow up in their generation to be men and women who are courageous, who are bold, and they will stand up for the truth of the gospel, that you died and that you paid the price for their sins and that you've risen from the grave. Help them to have the courage to stand up and to communicate that to their friends and to their, their neighbours and their communities. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Nice to see you. You were singing well. Oh. Bit of an echo, isn't it? No, it's good to see. This week's been interesting, to say the least. Uh, information overload, I think you call it. And uh, some days I have um, met myself coming in and met myself going out because it's just been kind of frenetic. Thank you for your welcome, though. It's been wonderful just to get to know a few of you this week and have some good conversations and uh, get to know one or two of you. And we'll, we'll do that with all of you over time, God willing, and get to know you all. One piece of news, just want to thank you for your prayers for our housing situation. And uh, as you know, we're, we're in a very nice rented accommodation at the moment, but we had an offer accepted on a house. And uh, God willing, uh, we'll be on the move again. <laughs> But not from here. Um, but uh, sometime in June, we hope to, to move, and they'll be looking for all the, the guys with muscles to come and lift all the heavy stuff. Connor, I'm looking at you. <laughs> Bring all your big pals with you, will you? Folks, we're going to read today from God's Word. We could have chosen from various Gospels for Palm Sunday. We're going to focus to begin with in Mark's Gospel and uh, Mark 11. Uh, Elaine, you could put that first slide on, please. Just as a, a backdrop, that's great. Hosanna in the highest. You've sung that so many times this morning, that word, and we'll be thinking a little bit more about that just now. But let's read together from Mark chapter 11, beginning at verse 1. Um, Darren has set the scene well, and, and the Minecraft video is actually a bit of a plot spoiler, wasn't it? So if you don't know what happens next in the Easter story after Palm Sunday, well, if you weren't paying attention to Minecraft, come along next Sunday and you'll find out. Um, in the Old Testament, in, in Exodus chapter 3, we read that God says, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt. I have given heed to their cry because of their taskmasters, for I am aware of their sufferings, so I have come down to deliver them. When we reach this moment in Jesus' life, we see those words coming to fruition. We see the God who has seen the affliction of his people. We see the God who has given heed to their cry. We see the God who is aware of his people's sufferings. And in Jesus, we see God come down. Mark 11, verse 1. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, what are you doing untying that colt? They answered, as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the coat to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David! Hosanna! in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Amen. We trust that God helps us as we look further into his word. 
just now. That crowd that we've just read of, they didn't necessarily perceive it or realize it at the time, but they were witnessing far more than the entry into Jerusalem of this man, Jesus, and his disciples. This man they'd heard about, who'd been building up a reputation in the Galilean countryside of miraculous happenings and radical teaching. What they were witnessing, indeed what they were part of that day, was the fulfillment of ancient prophecy. Prophecy which had to be fulfilled before the Messiah, the rescuer, could accomplish that plan that God had set in place for humanity. You see, many centuries before, a prophet by the name of Zechariah had written these words with the inspiration of God's Holy Spirit. You can read them in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Let me read them to you just now. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The symbolism which is on display on Palm Sunday as we know it is pregnant with meaning. Jesus, by sending his disciples off to collect this colt which was tied up, by doing that, he is publicly declaring that he is the promised one. He is the king. He is the Messiah. He is God's rescuer. The challenge to the religious leaders of the day is coming to a head. And as Jesus confronts their pious pomposity, oh, that's a good phrase, isn't it? Let's say that one again, pious pomposity. Sorry for anyone who's sitting in the front row with that one. (laughs) But as he confronts them with their religious, self-righteous ways, they are more and more determined to plot his demise, to bring his troublemaking days to an end once and for all. As Jesus sets, or rather as Jesus enters Jerusalem, the sat-nav is now set on its final destination, that of a hill outside the city gate, a hill called Golgotha, which ominously means place of the skull. But on this occasion, on this Sunday, this Palm Sunday, that's still a few days off. And although Jesus has it in mind, it's the last thing on the mind of those who are in the crowd. They are in full-on fiesta mode. It's the time of Passover. It's the great feast. The city was alive with visitors. Josephus, the historian, tells us that the city was so full that people were in tents living around outside the temple. It was Glastonbury, essentially, that was happening. That was the scene into which Jesus is riding. Many would be out-of-towners, Galileans, those who had witnessed much of Jesus' ministry. They'd seen his miraculous signs. They'd heard of the wonders that he'd been performing, the miracles. And so as the crowd sees at last Jesus sitting on this little donkey, the cry goes up. Hosanna! Hosanna! And eventually it picks up and the whole crowd is shouting, Hosanna! Now you've sung that numerous times this morning. I wonder if you know what it means. I wonder if you know what you've been singing. We sometimes do that in church, don't we? We sing words and then we go, what on earth does that mean? Well, we're going to think about that word just in a few moments. They throw down their clothes, their cloaks in front of Jesus. This was something that was symbolic as well. That was something that was done for royalty. This is another sign that the crowd are recognizing Jesus for who he is. They throw down these large leafy branches that they've cut down and the cheers continue. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father, David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. That's an interesting phrase. And the crowd are now quoting, essentially, from a psalm. They're quoting from Psalm 118, which is all about the coming Messiah, the chosen rescuer, the one who has been long promised to the nation of Israel. This is the crowd recognizing Jesus 
for who he is. And if we were to take time, we won't because it's quite lengthy, but if we were to take time to read all of that psalm, we would come to these couple of verses. Please, Lord, save us. Please, Lord, give us success. God bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless all of you from the temple of the Lord. The Lord is God and he has shown kindness to us. With branches in your hands, join the feast. Come to the corners of the altar. But back in Mark chapter 11, we see in verse 11, where we finished our reading, Jesus reaches the temple. Jesus is in Jerusalem. The last three years has been all about this journey. And the next few days will lead inexorably to the cross. And I hope that as you use your Easter readings this week, whether you're here in the building or on Zoom or just doing them at home, I hope that you will find yourself walking that journey with Jesus this week. But what about this word? This word that the crowd are shouting over and over again, this word that we've all sung today, Hosanna. Show the next slide, please, Elaine. I wonder if you've ever struggled with this. Many people struggle with this, if we can just put it up. There, there, there. Teachers in the room, how many teachers have we got in the room? Your pupils struggle with that, don't they? Not just your pupils, maybe your colleagues. Um, <laughs> no, saying nothing. But we do, we struggle with that. It's spelt differently, it sounds the same, and yet it, it imports different meaning, doesn't it? Depending on which there you have. Three words sound the same. They mean different things. Next slide, Elaine, please. If Hosanna was there, it's one word. It's not three words like there, there, there. It's one word, but it does mean different things. It means different things depending on how it's used. If we were, for example, to read the account of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday from John's Gospel, it's not a word that you can avoid. It's a word that we have sung over and over today. And we read in John's Gospel how the crowds, on hearing that Jesus was coming to the city, took branches and threw them and waved them and call out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. In Matthew's account, he records it, the crowds going ahead of him, those who followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And in Mark, where we read a few moments ago, we read Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna in the highest. What does it mean? It's a lovely word to say, isn't it? Hosanna. Say it with me. Hosanna. Hosanna. Say it again louder. Hosanna. Say it as if you mean it. Hosanna. That's what it would have sounded like, but louder. And not with your lovely accents. <laughs> well, this word goes back some way. It goes back and it appears once, only once in the Old Testament. And it's there that we find its original meaning. In that psalm that I referred to earlier, Psalm 118 and verse 25, I read it to you earlier. Lord, save us. Please grant us success. Hosanna is a cry for help. Save us. Save us. Hosanna. Well, maybe these are Hosanna days that we're all living through. Certainly for the people living through the horrific events in Ukraine, these are Hosanna days, aren't they? Lord, save us. Hosanna. Maybe we can pray that on their behalf this morning. Lord, save them. Hosanna. But you know, for us too, as we look around and realize just how far our own country has wandered away from God's truth and His righteousness, for us too, these ought to be Hosanna days. Lord, save us. Hosanna. But you know, when you read the rest of that psalm, 
You will see that almost immediately after asking God to save him, the psalmist says, blessed or blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. It's as if the writer has recognized, having said, save us, it's as if the penny drops that God has already saved us. God has already saved him. Those who have studied the Bible over uh, many years tell us that the word's meaning began to change over the centuries. And so in Jewish culture, instead of saying, save me or save us, they began to say, salvation has come. Hosanna meant that God had rescued them. And so they would say, Hoshiana, Hoshiana, which sounds very similar, doesn't it, to Hosanna. Hoshiana. Now, I don't know if you've been in this situation like I have many times. In fact, I referred to it a few months ago during our roadside assistance series when you break down far from home, or your car does, not you. Although you may break down after your car <laughs> breaks down. But you feel helpless in that situation. You need someone to come and deal with the situation. You call the AA or the RAC or whoever, and your phone call is one of Hosanna. Save me. Some time elapses. Eventually, you see the tow truck arrive. You can relax. And so you can have another Hosanna moment. <sighs> Salvation has come. I've been rescued. Hosanna. Well, when Jesus rides into Jerusalem, the crowds get very excited. They shout, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They are declaring, in effect, that they are recognizing Jesus to be Messiah, the Savior, sent by God to free them. This is a salvation has come, Hosanna. He's here at last. Hosanna. Hosanna to the son of David, the rescuer. And so instead of it being a cry for help, it has become an acknowledgement that that help has arrived. And when they go further and shout, as Mark records for us, Hosanna in the highest. It's as if they're declaring, not just to the people around, but to God and heaven itself. I was chatting to someone this week and we were relating and reflecting on how sometimes we find out that God has answered our prayers even before we have prayed them. Do you ever find that? It's amazing. Hosanna, save us, becomes Hosanna, salvation has come. I don't know you. I know some of you very lightly, I guess. We've only had fleeting conversations with just a few of you. I don't know you this morning. God does. And that's what matters. But I wonder today as I look out at you, I wonder which Hosanna you're saying this morning. I wonder which Hosanna you're shouting this morning. Are you saying, Hosanna, save me. Save me from what's going on in the world. Save me from COVID-19. Save me from the desperate state we're in. Save me from uncertainty. Save me from separation and isolation. Save me from crippling debt. Save me from my broken relationships. Save me from those unhealthy choices I'm making in my life. Save me from my fear. Save me from my doubt. Save me from my worries. Just save me from myself. Is that you? Or are you saying, Hosanna, salvation has come. I know that whatever happens to me, I'm safe because Jesus has been and died and rescued me from something even greater than the pandemic of COVID-19. I know that salvation has come and I know that his name is Jesus. I know that you've already answered my prayers. I know that you've already sent Jesus to save me, even before I knew I needed saving. I know that he died on the cross to free me from my worst symptoms of selfishness and sin. And I know that he came to set the captives free. And that means me, because I've been trapped and tangled by the sins in my life. 
my prayer for each one of you without even knowing you this morning is that you will look outside of the normal solutions that you go to in your life when you run into troubles and that instead you would consider this morning that just maybe at this point in your life God is trying to get your attention. It's interesting to note as we look back on the last two years as we continue to emerge from this pandemic, that in that time, the world has changed. Perhaps it's changed forever. In the space of just a few short weeks at the start of 2020, pretty much everything that mankind worshipped was taken away. Did you notice that? Sport. I love sport. I remember the pain of going through my sky planner and deleting all the matches and all the golf that I had set to record because they had just been cancelled. All the fixtures were cancelled and then eventually, some months later, they were played out in empty stadiums. As a Queen of the South fan, I was already used to that, of course. Some of you are laughing just a bit loudly at that one. I'll have words with you after. <laughs> Leisure. Everything from going for a walk to shopping, clubbing, if that's your thing. They were only possible through the filter of restrictions, weren't they? Meeting with friends and family. How many of you had to meet family through a pane of glass? Or not at all? And I well remember all the funerals I took when only a handful of people could be present. Unimaginable before COVID. Money and wealth. That was dealt with, wasn't it? Petrol, do you remember petrol was 99 pence a litre, but you couldn't go anywhere. <laughs> Those were the days. <laughs> Personal freedom, travel, holidays, all of those things just fell away like a stack of dominoes. And when all that's stripped away, what's left? Well, what's left is save me or thank you for saving me. Talk to someone in the week who seemingly just had the world on their shoulders. I wonder when that happens to you, when your world crashes around you, what do you do? In my experience, you're faced with just two options. You can either run towards God, who describes himself as a very present help in times of trouble, or you can run away. You can turn your back. You can ignore him. You can reject him. That's the choice. Well, I want to help you with that choice. I want to help you say, Hosanna, save me. I'm going to ask the band to come up and join me just now. And I want to point you, if that's you this morning, I want to point you to the only one who can save us, the only one who we can genuinely come to and say, Hosanna, save us, and know that it will make a difference. I'd like all the church to stand. If you're able, would you stand with me, please? Because if you'd like to know the saving power of Jesus in your life for the first time today, or maybe you've been wandering or drifting in your faith. Maybe the pandemic didn't do your faith any favors. And you know that you need to reconnect. Or maybe you're just at that point in your life for the first time where you just know that you need to be set free. I said to you, didn't I? Jesus came to set the captives free. And you want to be free. You want to be free from your past. You want to be free from all the things that keep you from being the person that God made you to be. And this morning you can start over with a brand new heart and make a brand new start. And if that's you this morning, I'm going to pray a prayer. I would invite you to pray these words with me, after me, out loud or quietly. It doesn't matter. God can see them and hear them just the same. With every head bowed then, let's pray. Lord God, Hosanna, save me. Save me from my sin. Save me from my selfishness. 
Hosanna. Thank you that salvation has come. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that you came to set me free. Forgive me from all my sin, which I regret so deeply. I ask you to receive me now as one of yours, to help me live for you with your help from this day forward. In Jesus' name, I pray. And let all the church say these words after me. Hosanna. Hosanna. Salvation, has Salvation has come. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing as we come towards the end of our service. But can I encourage you that if you have prayed that prayer today, perhaps for the first time, let someone know. Don't go away holding that secret. Let one of us know. Come and speak to myself. Speak to Darren or Joe or somebody that you know who comes to the church here. And if you're watching online, please get in touch through the church website. Contact details are on there so that you can do that. We'd love to help you grow as a new Christian. What a great time to become a Christian. New life in Jesus at Easter time. Isn't that marvelous? Lisa and the band are going to lead us in our closing worship. I see the King of glory. Amen. I see the King of glory Coming on the clouds with fire The whole earth shakes The whole earth shakes I see His love and mercy Washing over all our sin Thank you. 
Amen. If you'd like to stay, stay for tea and coffee, um, just remember to sign the Moldova card, which is at the hatch by the tea and coffee, and also pick up your reading plan for the week as well. Have a great week, everybody.